I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details. There are a few times when a movie impacts you so hard that your regular thought processes and presentation goes for an absolute toss. The case of a film delivering not only in its screenplay, visuals, music and performances but several themes it explores almost to perfection. It makes my heart so happy to see consecutive weeks where not only have people resonated with the content produced from Hindi cinema but that there are still original voices within the industry telling compelling stories, a reminder to the people who assume that Bollywood is a one-trick pony of borrowing ideas, absolutely wrong. Anvita Dutt is a creator who made me doubt my own ability to dissect films, its form, genre and intention with her 2020 release Bulbul. A movie I misinterpreted from the onset as I could not understand its subtext it was aiming to shed light on but upon further discovery kept adding layers to my ultimate analysis of the film. This made me absolutely invested and intrigued on her new project titled Kala that has released on Netflix today. Set in the 1940s, the movie focuses on the complicated relationship between a singer popular within the film industry and her perfectionist mother. The film interplays between the present and how Kala, played by Tripti Dimri, reached the successful heights of her career. The never-ending pursuit of perfection with the art form, the debilitating effect it has on the individual constantly seeking for validation of her blood, and finally, how decisions taken up in the past come to haunt and torment Kala despite having everything she ever dreamt of forms the basic storyline of this effective, engaging, beautiful and heartbreaking film that easily becomes one of my favourite Hindi ventures of 2022. In an age where we are inundated with criticism regarding the Hindi film industry and its incessant need to remake classic songs, within a few weeks we've had the most inventive and original soundtracks from two films. Achin Thakkar, with his retro and diverse ode to Shankar Jaikishan, was an absolute blast in Monica Oh My Darling and in comes Amit Trivedi, with an absolute treat to the ears with the songs that he has composed in Kala that never act as a break to the screenplay, but highlight and expand upon the several dynamics among the characters in the film. This becomes especially true as Babel Khan's character Jagan Batwal is introduced with the song Nirbhav Nirve. A case of me getting instant goosebumps as if I was in the very presence of a live bandish taking place in a packed auditorium. An absolute treat to the ears as Amit Trivedi formulates an enchanting tune with the vocals of Shahid Malia. I was overwhelmed with just the atmosphere created immediately, tying into the impact that it has on the characters of Kala and her mother Urmila played by Swastika Mukherjee. An introduction into their lives that changes their fate forever. This just opens the floodgates of how beautifully the music has been integrated into this intricate but impactful screenplay. The song Shock, one of my favourites from the album, ties into the same dynamic and the organic gravitational pull that Urmila has towards Jagan and his ability as a singer stopping Kala in her tracks as she attempts to sing the song. Another great instance is a reminder of why any artistic expression starts, a case of one doing it for themselves before the commencement of the lively number Ghode Pe Sawar. I can't tell you how beautifully each song has infused life in this film, and this is not only representative of the era which it is set in, but speaks volumes of an artist like Amit Trivedi who has an aversion to recycling content and has a genuine pursuit in formulating a unique experience. I know the most overused term is to reference the cinematography of a film with the term every frame is a painting, but this could not be a more accurate assessment of the frames captured by cinematographer Siddharth Diwan who also did a beautiful job in Bulbul. From the old palatial yet worn out look of Kala's home in Calcutta, the grand house nestled in between the snow-capped mountains of Himachal Pradesh, or the several analogies that Anvita successfully portrays with the imagery that unexplainably torments Kala every step of the way. The film is a masterclass in not getting too eccentric with its visual storytelling, yet catering to the self-destructive journey of an artist and daughter with great skill. The production design by Meena Lagarwal really does make me crave to have watched these frames on the big screen, because it truly is a sight to behold. The never-ending pursuit of perfecting an art form has been expanded upon brilliantly in movies like Whiplash and the Marathi film The Disciple, where the insurmountable goal almost makes artists reach a manic state, a never-ending cycle of wanting to prove oneself yet always falling short. This gets highlighted especially through the effective dialogues of Anvita and the commentary of not only an artist but being born as a woman. The case of love only being showered upon a child when one proves their worth through their work. 
the case of an absence of unconditional love and the vicious cycle of seeking validation that makes them a minuscule version of what their ultimate potential was. Lines are flung towards Kala like Izzat ka khyal zyada rakhna padega and a double whammy within seconds of Pandit banna hai, bai nahi. A heartbreaking scene showcases the void that Kala wants to be filled through a phone call on a day that she should have been the happiest, a proud moment. One is left with nothing but emptiness. A parallel with Gangu by Kathiawadi of how one is devoid of warmth and love when everything visibly seems perfect. Anvita Dutt does instill her social commentary through the screenplay, especially the case of women in the workspace. This especially said during the 1940s when abuse was mostly unreported does not feel forced. The case of equal pay, female secretaries and the abuse of power all act as a window for us to understand Kala and how she has shaped up as an adult. But it is some of the understated dialogues that really get the point across. A lyricist played by Varun Grover beautifully states looking at Kala in a distressed state. Sab kuch aise hi apne mein daba ke rakhogi, chupa ke rakhogi, duba ke rakhogi, din sehlaab aayega. Or even something as simple as a daughter's cry for help. Or an individual just wanting to be acknowledged. Kala achingly asks someone, Aap mujhe dek sakte ho? Or fearing the worst in her life, she asks her mother, Hum ghar chale? It's these subtle yet effective moments that make this movie more than just a visually stunning film, but a nuanced tale that you will often revisit as it's still relevant today. It really is the lingering sadness and ethereal old-school beauty of Tripti Dimri that totally won me over. She showcased the same angst and trauma with projects like Bulbul and Leila Majnu, and there is this inherent sadness that she possesses making me feel, and I know I might be going out of my way by saying this, she would be the perfect choice to play Madhubala in her biopic. There is this childlike disappointment she expresses at every inconvenience. She has genuine fear in her eyes when confronting her mother, and the lines, sorry mama, echo throughout the screenplay, clearly denoting the lack of agency she has of her own life. She really puts forth one of the finest performances of the year and is assisted brilliantly by a stellar supporting cast. The intimidating and daunting presence of Swastika Mukherjee consumed in her rigid ways, not understanding the impact on her child is exceptionally portrayed from the very first scene of the birth of her child. The dynamic is immediately known and set in stone. Babel Khan is brilliant in his debut, having the same understated and raspy tone in his delivery, looking like a spitting image of a young Irfan from Salam Bombay. I could not say this enough that there is so much you will take away from this film, both from an artistic and philosophical point of view. The concluding 30 minutes of this film is a beautiful concoction of imagery that ties the screenplay perfectly to justify the demons each character is dealing with. A pursuit of excellence often finds artists craving for the spotlight, realizing the void still remains while they achieve everything they could ever wish for. The artistic and individual tying into fate and karma is a sight to witness, and even though the context of these lines is a commentary on the abuse Kala faces on her journey, I feel it is also indicative of the future of Hindi cinema and how Kala acts as a drop in the ocean for change, a change for a brighter, inventive and more original pursuit. As Varun Grover beautifully does say, Dor badlega, Dor ki ye purani aadat hai. And that was a video, guys. Write down in the comments below what you thought about Kala. Please don't forget to follow me on Instagram. The handle's right in front of you. Follow me at jammypans4. Also, please support us by smashing the like button and subscribing to our channel for weekly content ahead. Thank you for watching.